Hello, Alton. We thank you so much for being here today. We're here to share a loving message of our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a loving message, ladies and gentlemen. God has been given us a bad reputation in 2020. People, the media, everybody's teaching us, the world is teaching us that God is full of hatred. We had a young woman in Portsmouth a few days ago who said that God committed genocide. But we are here to correct the record on behalf of Jesus Christ, our one and only Savior, that the gospel is the gospel of peace. It is the message of glad tidings. And the most important thing for us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Bible teaches us very clearly that we have, if we have not come to Jesus Christ, the Bible shows us we're all sinners and that we are dead, we are condemned in our sins. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That means every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, if we have not come to Christ, we are not righteous. The Bible tells us there is none good. There is none righteous, no, not one. The reason we're not righteous, ladies and gentlemen, is we're all sinners. Every single one of us has committed sin. And the vast, overwhelming majority of us will readily acknowledge that we have sinned. What is sin, ladies and gentlemen? Let's not leave terms undefined. What do we mean by sin? Sin is just simply a transgression of God's law. We've all heard of the Ten Commandments before. If we have told but one lie, which we all have, we are thereby, by definition, liars. If, thank you so much, sir. God bless you. If we have told but one sin, the Bible tells us that we are liars. If we have fornicated, if we have fornicated, if we have had sex out of marriage, if we have stolen anything, even when we were a young child, then we have acquired a sin debt. When we sin, ladies and gentlemen, we acquire a debt. And that debt must be paid. That's the reason that the good news is the good news. Because for the, the wages of sin is death. And when we say the wages of sin is death, we're not talking about the death only of this physical body. This physical body is going to die, but there is a second death. When these bodies perish, the soul lives on. When these bodies perish, the soul lives on. And when Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is being said there is that there is going to be a, a spiritual, the second death. That's the soul that lives on, is going to be eternally condemned to hell. That's the bad news. That's the bad news that much of the world does not want to hear. Romans 3.10 tells us, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Those two verses, Romans 3.10 and 3.23, are saying the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is saying that there is none righteous, that we are all sinners. Every single one of us has committed sin. Because every single one of us has transgressed God's law. We are all sinners. Before I came to Christ as a 49-year-old man, before I came to Christ as a 49-year-old man, I was dead in my sins. I was condemned 
to eternal perdition. That's a fancy phrase for condemned to hell. Had I died at any point in time, had I died, had I perished at any point in time in my 49 years, at least after I reached the age of accountability, I would have died and I would have been condemned to eternal perdition, eternal con condemnation, eternity in hell. Let's be really clear. We're talking about eternal torment. The soul is going to be in eternal torment in hell if we have not come to Jesus Christ in faith and in truth. That's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. It's quite a chilly Friday afternoon in Alton. There's many other things that all of us could be doing. But we're coming here out of love. God is calling us back home, ladies and gentlemen. We're living in the last days. The signs of these being the last days are everywhere around us. Those of us who abide in God's Word, those of us who read God's Word through the Bible, the King James Bible, we understand that the signs of the times of these being the last days are everywhere around us. The darkness of the days foretells that these days are going to come to an end. This world, the Bible tells us, is going to be judged. This world is going to be condemned. It's not a popular message in 2020. People don't want to hear that we are condemned in our sins, but it doesn't matter whether we want to hear that or not. It doesn't matter whether this agrees with our temperament or not. No word of God falls to the ground. Every single prophecy that God has ever given us has come to pass, except for those that are shortly to come to pass. That's why we're here, folks, because we recognize that because we're all sinners, because we're all sinners, we need salvation. And in, the good news is summarized in just one verse of the Bible. And please, ladies and gentlemen, don't, don't accept anything that I say as gospel truth. We all have access in 2020 to, to a Bible. Cross-reference what I say to the Bible and find out whether I might be spinning lies like the rest of the world or whether we might be going out of our way to share the truth out of love and out of concern for each and every soul in the town of Alton. Let's get back to that one verse that so beautifully contains the whole of the gospel message. It comes from the book of John, the fourth book of the New Testament. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, otherwise known as John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what we have done, no matter how egregious the sins are that we have committed, right up in, including murder, even if we have actually murdered somebody. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever, every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life, ladies and gentlemen, is the good news. We are condemned in our sins, the Bible shows us very clearly. But we don't have to be condemned in our sins. If we just put our faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of the Bible, we're not talking about religion. We're not talking about church. We're talking about Jesus Christ in salvation through faith in Him. 
is enough for us to attain everlasting life. If I were handing out free hot chocolates on this chilly Friday afternoon, and it was really good, high quality hot chocolate, so many people would be lining up, wouldn't they? Or a free flat white, or a cappuccino, or a latte. People would be lining up. But we're talking about everlasting life, the gift of God, that all we need to do is believe on Jesus Christ to receive that beautiful gift, that loving gift of our loving Father, God Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, all we have to do to receive that gift that free gift of God that God wants us to have. Our loving Father is calling us back home. He wants us to believe on His Son. And for that simple measure, simply by believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we can attain to everlasting life. That's not to say that this body, that this mortal body is not going to die. It is. But the soul that lives on does not have to go into eternal perdition for having rejected God, for having rejected our Creator. God has been long-suffering, filled with love and mercy. God is filled with love. God is love. The Bible tells us in three words, God is love. That means God is equal to love. Love is equal to God. God is the very definition of love. And He's loving upon you right now, ladies and gentlemen, by having you hear the Gospel message of Jesus Christ in 2020. The Bible tells us that in these last days, mockers and scoffers will come, walking after the lust of their own ungodly flesh. That gives us yet more evidence that these are the last days because mockers and scoffers are everywhere. Mockers and scoffers think they're so cool by mocking and scoffing, yet they are ubiquitous. They are the almost universal norm. The few, the few are those who have laid down their arrogance the few are those who in humility have come in faith to Jesus Christ. In order to come to Christ in faith, we have to humble ourselves. And in 2020, this time where pride is lifted up, and we are lifted up, we find it oh so difficult to humble ourselves. But that's a prerequisite because nothing we can do is going to save us from eternal condemnation. We are dead in our sins. John 3.18 tells us in no uncertain terms we are condemned in our sins if we are not in Christ. And to come to Christ once again, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to go to church. This isn't a this isn't a discussion of religion. The churches in our midst in 2020 are by and large, with very few exceptions, filled with wickedness. The Catholic Church is filled with wickedness. How many pedophilia reports need to emanate from the Catholic Church before we realize it's an antichrist institution? How many reports of pedophilia need to emanate from the Anglican Church or any of these other churches that people have put their trust in before we recognize that these are not Christian churches? The Church of England is a political institution, just as the Catholic Church is a political institution. They are working tirelessly in tandem along with many other people to raise up the Antichrist into power in these last days. The true church is a spiritual entity. It is not 
a denomination. The true church is a spiritual body. It includes all of the members of Christ, the full body of Christ of which we are each. Each believer is a member. Each member, each believer, together, together comprise the true body of Christ. It is not these wicked churches in our midst. The Catholic Church teaches a false works-based salvation. The Church of England teaches a false works-based salvation. I know because I was confirmed in the Church of England, in the Anglican Church, and I never heard the Gospel. They don't teach it. The Catholic Church teaches that we have to follow all these sacraments. They're unbiblical. You will not find them in the Bible. In fact, what you will find in the Bible is to call no man on earth your father, for one is your father which is in heaven. So you can know automatically you're in a false church if you're calling your priest father. Because the Bible explicitly says, call no man on earth your father. But also the Anglican Church is teaching a false gospel. <laughs> we preach the gospel all over the UK, ladies and gentlemen. Every single person, every member of the Anglican Church that I ask the question of, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you would go to heaven? Ubiquitously, universally, every single person Anglican Church member says, I don't know. I don't know that I have been good enough. Every single Anglican member that I have ever preached the gospel says, I don't know. I don't know whether I have been good enough. And therein is the truth. The Church of England, like the Catholic Church and many of the established churches in these wicked day and age, teach a false works-based salvation. Let me give you that verse that I gave a little while ago, John 3.16. This is in the Bible. You can look it up for yourself, folks. I don't want you to trust anything that I say. Go home and read your Bible. Cross-reference what I say. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So for all those Anglican church members, including my 82-year-old mother, who says, I don't know, Sean, whether I have been good enough, John 3.16 tells us, for whosoever, meaning every single one of us, who believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That just shows you that the Church of England does not want their parishioners to know the truth. The Church of England does not want their parishioners to know the truth any more than the Anglican Church wants their members to know the truth. Are you Catholic? Okay. Yeah, um, I have just explained that, but you're welcome to stick around and listen and I'll explain it. Yeah? Can I ask you a, can I ask you a question? What do you call your priest when you talk to him? Thank you. The Bible explicitly says, Call no man on earth your father, for one is your father which is in heaven. Okay? So right there. Can I ask you a question? No, that's false. That's what the Catholic. That's what the Catholic. We're not talking. We're not talking about religion. We're talking. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about the Word of God. The Word of God, which the Catholic religion flouts at every turn. The Catholic religion. You're welcome to move on. The Catholic Church teaches a false gospel. You don't need to keep the sacraments to be saved. The Catholic Church says, 
Um, you know, we're meant to call the Pope, Pope. Pope means Father. Catholic priests, we refer to them as Father. But the Bible, again, the Word of God says, Call no man on earth your Father, for one is your Father which is in heaven. Catholics don't like to hear this, of course. Anglican members don't like to hear that their church is teaching a false gospel. But we can confirm these things in the Word of God, ladies and gentlemen. The Catholic Church has created this entity called purgatory, which is nowhere in the Bible. Purgatory does not exist. Purgatory was made up by the Catholic Church. It does not exist anywhere in the Bible. God's Word says nothing about purgatory. Purgatory is a sinner's wet dream. With purgatory, we think that we can sin all of our lives. With purgatory, we think that we can sin for our whole lifetime, and then we can simply work it off in purgatory, and then we can go to heaven. That is a lie of the devil. There is no such thing in the, in the Word of God, in the Bible, about purgatory. It is fiction. It was made up by the Catholic Church. It is a way to fool people into thinking they can live their best life now. And then, and then work their sins off by going to purgatory and then go to heaven. But purgatory is just another lie of the Catholic Church. Just as the Anglican Church is keeping the truth from its parishioners. If only we would abide in God's Word. If only we would read the Bible. If only we would pick up the Bible. We can download, we can download it on our, on our smart it's a great phone. application for iPhone or Android. It's called Tecarta. T E C A R T A. When you download to Carta, a free Bible app, you get the King James Bible by default. That's all that you need to begin to abide in God's Word. If we begin to abide in God's Word, we will realize how foolish we are. If we begin to abide in God's world, we will, Word, we will begin to realize how wicked we are and how wicked the heart of man is. Remember, in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Remember, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Revelation 21.8 tells us that all unbelievers and all liars and every single one of us has told a lie before. Revelation 21 verse 8, chapter 21 verse 8, tells us that all unbelievers and all liars, meaning every one of us folks, is going to have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, the Bible tells us. Now we cannot do anything, ladies and gentlemen, but give you this message, both the bad news that we're condemned in our sins already, but also the good news that if we just put our faith, if we put our trust on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we can have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That is nothing to mock about, nothing to take lightly. We know these bodies are going to perish, but the soul is going to live on. John 14, 6, chapter 14, verse 6 says, in Jesus Christ's own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me, Jesus Christ. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus Christ's own words in the book of John. 
He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Bless you. Thank you. That means that there's only one way, ladies and gentlemen. One way if you've been listening. If you've been listening instead of mocking, I am the way, the truth, and the life means there's only one way. That one way is Jesus Christ. We don't get to we don't get to the Father by going to church. We don't go to heaven by going to church every Sunday. We don't go to church by confessing to a Catholic priest. We don't get to heaven by any means, but by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Jesus Christ is the Creator of all things. The Bible tells us very clearly in Timothy 3.16, for great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. In the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Check it out on your own Bibles, folks. If you can find it amongst all of your Harry Potter paraphernalia. If you can find your Bible amidst your gone girl trash horrible quote unquote literature see if you can find your bible somewhere that dusty old tomb do you hallelujah if you read both of them do you abide in them every single day let's go if we abide in God's Word, we can know what God expects of us. We don't have to lean onto our own understanding. Instead, we can have the wisdom of God. No, I'm not going to switch it off because I'm here. Okay. No, he wants me to switch it off. Okay. So, let's get back to fundamentals. For God knows of the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, meaning every single one of us, boy, girl, man, woman, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible tells us we must confess him with our mouths. And we must believe in our hearts that God hath raised him up on the third day. We must believe, in other words, that Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh, which 1 Timothy 3.16 gives us, and that He came to pay for all of the sins of all mankind, which He did. Jesus Christ died a torturous death. He was nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. Imagine having nails going through the center of your hands. Imagine having your feet nailed. Imagine having your feet nailed to the cross. Imagine having your hands nailed to the cross. Imagine all of the torture that he had gone through before he even came to the cross. He thereby paid for all of mankind's sins. It was, a, it was the ultimate act of love. It was the ultimate act of love to die that torturous death so that we can live. And now in 2020, we just mock and, and scoff and we're ready to spit upon Him or even crucify Him again. There are a great many people who in 2020 would love to crucify Jesus Christ all over again. That shows you how wicked we are. That shows you the wickedness of mankind. But Jesus Christ willingly came into this world knowing that He was going to be nailed to the cross. He came into this world willingly knowing He was going to be nailed to the cross. To pay for our sins so that we don't have to perish. 
and go to hell for all of eternity. And all that His Father asked is that you just believe on Him. It's a terribly sad story, ladies and gentlemen. But it's going to be tragic for those of you who are mocking and scoffing because you are on your way to hell. You don't have to take my word for it. Read your Bibles. John 3.18 says, If we are not in Christ, we are condemned already. John 3.18, read it. It says, if we're not in Christ, we're condemned already. That's not speaking of your mortal body. It's speaking of your eternal soul, ladies and gentlemen. It's speaking of your eternal soul. We cannot, we cannot force you to believe the good news. We cannot... We cannot force you to believe the loving message of Jesus Christ's gospel. All we can do is we can preach it. Jesus commanded all of his disciples to, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's what we're doing. But we can't force you to come to Christ. We can only preach it in hope and pray that you hear this. We can only hope and pray that you hear this loving message. You might go the rest of your life without hearing a preacher share the gospel with you. You might go the rest of your life without hearing the gospel message. Today is the day of salvation. Today, right now, is the day of salvation. Because tomorrow doesn't always come. And if we die in our sins, then we are going to hell for all of eternity. The Bible says, this is not me saying, this is the Bible saying. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, talking about the perishing of the soul but can have the gift of everlasting life. What would you rather have, ladies and gentlemen? Have your soul perish and go to hell? Or have everlasting life with God the Father, living in a world that is good and righteous, living in a world that is the way this world was meant to be before we fell into egregious sin? Thank you so much, Alton. I really appreciate your listening. I pray in the name of my one and only Savior, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. I pray for this town. I pray for all the mockers and scoffers. I pray for all of you who are in unbelief that you begin to abide in God's Word. Download the King James Bible today. But most importantly, call out to Jesus Christ. Most importantly, call out to Jesus Christ and say, Dear Lord, I am a sinner. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sin. And in that very moment, He will reach down with His grace, with His love, and He will save you for all of eternity. We can mock, we can scoff, but we're being so foolish, ladies and gentlemen. These are not my words, these are the words of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We don't need to go to church. We can simply call out to Jesus Christ in truth and in faith and say, Dear Lord, save me from my sins. And He will save Thank us. You my and He will save us from our sins. It could not be any easier. And God tells us that we are without excuse. When we go before His judgment throne, God has already told us in advance in the Bible that we are without excuse. You are double without excuse when you have had a preacher of righteousness 
come and share the gospel message with you. I pray in Jesus Christ's name that a great many people receive this message. I pray that it falls on good ground. And I pray that people begin to call out to Jesus Christ today and ask for their forgiveness. Ask for His forgiveness for their sins. We're all sinners, buddy. Thank you so much, Alton. Thank you for listening. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen.